my name is Chef Stephanie Chinchilla, and today on All Things Orange County, I'm going to teach you how to make four different salsas. Uh, these are four of my most popular salsas, but before I get started, I want to just tell you a little bit about me. Uh, I own a small business here in Orange County in uh, Costa Mesa, and we offer a variety of culinary experiences, typically. Um, some of those things are closed off at the moment, but I'll just tell you a little short story about them so when all this is over, we hope to have you come in and join us. We do wine tastings, uh, farm to table pairing dinners. Um, my husband is a sommelier, so he does all of the uh, wines for this. His name is Alvaro Chinchilla, and he's in the background here today doing the tech for these videos. He's very, very handy, which makes him happy. In case you hear his voice, he may ask a few uh, questions that are pertinent and really important for you to hear in case I miss anything. So. Uh, we're going to make four different types of salsas today. One's going to be a roasted red salsa, a roasted green salsa, a raw green salsa, and also a pico de gallo. So we're going to come on over here to uh, my cutting board and I'm going to show you what we have here. Um, on the right, this tray particularly on purpose is just set for the base of what you would need in order to make salsa. So you're going to need at least tomatillo or tomato, one type of onion, garlic, and a chili pepper. These are all essential ingredients that are necessary for any salsa that you are making. Um, salt and pepper, very important. Uh, we're gonna use a canola oil when we make our salsas today, um, but you don't have to use that one. Just do a, a higher burning uh, oil if you're going to be cooking your salsas or roasting them. On this tray here, we have uh, five different types of chilies that we're gonna use that are raw chilies. A Fresno chili, uh, a yellow uh, jalapeno chili, excuse me. In your Mexican market locally, it's just gonna say a yellow chili. It won't say a uh, yellow jalapeno. This one here is jalapeno. It's very similar to a Fresno chili, but it has a much thicker skin. And it also, um, obviously is a different color, these are red. This here is a serrano, and this is a habanero chili. They go up from, not necessarily mild, but they go up in uh, heat here. Just so in case you're wondering uh, which ones you wanna pick. If you want a more mild salsa, stick to the guys over here and move your way up. As we prepare the rest of the salsas, I'll go through and show you another way to kind of make them um, mild if that's what you're into. In my household, we love spicy. So we're gonna leave the seeds and all the good stuff in. Um, over here, these are some um, other ingredients that we're gonna be using to make the salsas. Uh, our raw salsa is going to have parsley in it today, totally not standard, but it is delicious and wonderful when you make that and repeat it at home. Um, I want to say it's probably my most popular number one staple salsa these days, so definitely try that one out, okay? We're also going to use some raw green onion and cilantro, and I use lime on some of my salsas, not on all, uh, and I'll go into a little more detail why I don't use lime on all of them later. Over here, these are the dried chilies that we're gonna use today. So we have um, arbol chilies, negro chilies, um, hatch chilies, excuse me, puya chilies, and guajillo chilies. Of these dried, these two are the most popular, arbol and uh, guajillo chilies are staple most of the time for Latin dishes. However, these three others, to be honest, are often um, some of my favorites that I use. So feel free to use one, two, or all five of them when you make your salsas. Um, one thing I want to explain that salsa is extremely forgiving. It is, it is so delicious. There's not a right way. There's not a wrong way. You can modify and make it your own. There are some traditional ways that we make salsa in Latin cultures, but each state does things different. So feel free to, just because the way that you normally make it and your family makes it a certain way, change it up and try something different. It's going to be really, really delicious and you will definitely not regret it. Okay. Um, over here on the top, we're going to use, I'm gonna bring this down so you can see it. This is gonna be our red roasted salsa. In here, we're using um, tomatillos, Fresno chilies, white onion, and cilantro, as well as garlic. Um, on our green one, um, same ingredients, we're just using a yellow chili and uh, same habanero. This one is our raw uh, salsa. This one has parsley and um, green onion, which is what's different here, in addition to the avocado. The avocado gives a really nice richness, silkiness, um, of course, as well as flavor to the salsa. And then here we have our pico de gallo. I'm going to move these on out of the way so we can go ahead and get started. So, real quick, when it comes to handling your chilies, um, I do this a lot. So, my hands are, you know, I'm not super sensitive to spice. I love spicy things as well. 
if you're very sensitive to spice, use some gloves. It will be helpful in uh, not, you know, your hands sometimes can burn too if you're using something spicy. Also, um, just in case later you touch your eyes or your nose or, or your mouth, your lips, something it burns really bad. Um, the gloves will be helpful for that. Also, in case you forgot to put gloves on, rub some coarse salt on your hand. Like get a little water in there and just rub it around, rub it around really good. It will extract some of that um, oils from your hands and be really helpful. Okay? So over here on our tray, this is how I'm going to prepare uh, for our salsa. Now, one way to make it mild is to take out some of the seeds. That will be helpful, but these top pieces are really important um, to remove. We don't want that in our salsa. I'm gonna leave all the seeds because they're delicious and we like spicy. Also note that when you make this salsa at home, um, when you're done making it, that night it's gonna be significantly spicier. Um, when you initially taste it, you're gonna be like, wow, that's really hot. But the next day it tames a lot. So don't, don't hesitate if you like spicy to throw in a little something extra. So we're gonna use all four of these. I'm gonna move this on over to our stove shop top. I'm gonna show you how to grill these up and soften them for our salsa in just a short bit so they're ready to go. And here we're gonna go ahead and get started with our roasted red salsa. This uh, um, cilantro is gonna be added in at the end when I blend it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that for, the, for now and just set it to the side exactly in the same spot so I know what goes where. When I make my salsas, I love to put in raw and roasted garlic. So I'm gonna leave a few cloves out, set them to the side and add them in. It'll just give you um, a different dynamic and flavor, roasted and raw. Obviously we all know it tastes really different, so it'll be really nice. And then our green salsa. Both of these are gonna be cooked, so that's why I'm doing them together. Again, I'm gonna remove my cilantro, take out a few cloves of my garlic, so I can put some raw in there later. And then I just wanna show you real quick, I actually forgot to mention, there's two different sizes of tomatillos when you go shop at your market. This one is um, obviously significantly larger, okay? I highly recommend when you go to your market, if they have these smaller ones, purchase them, okay? They definitely have less acidity. They're a little bit sweeter. Um, tomatillos can be sour, so especially depending on the season that you get them. Um, so try to go ahead and get these smaller ones if you can, even though they're a little bit more of a pain to pick everything off. These husks that are on the outside, um, in case they're really sticky and hard to remove, go ahead and put them in some water and then they'll come off really easily. The outside of these are very, very sticky. So once you're done peeling them, you wanna wash your hands. Uh, and then go ahead and give them a good rinse. Before you cook them, make sure you dry them off really well. You don't wanna put anything um, that's wet into a hot skillet. Okay, and my oven is set at 400 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make sure that I'm using a high burning oil. It's very important that the smoke point of whatever oil you are selecting is at least 400 degrees or more. So an avocado oil, grapeseed oil, um, canola oil, et cetera. I'll give this just a toss to make sure we're good to go. And this one, um, I'm gonna roast, I'm gonna cook, I'm gonna show you how to make cook salt in two different ways. Traditionally, we make it on a stove top. It'll be done on a comal or a cast iron skillet. Um, we're gonna do ours on the stove top and a cast iron, and then I'm also gonna place one in the oven so that you can see the difference and how you can do it both ways. You don't wanna put in your oil until your actual pan is nice and hot. Once your pan is really nice and hot, add in your oil. Um, just to clarify, you don't wanna leave your, your pan on your stove top for 10 minutes warming is it's significantly too long you just want to make sure it's hot once it's hot immediately add your oil just okay so now we have uh one of our trays in the oven at 400 degrees it should be about 20 minutes now when you make your sauces at home feel free to leave them in there for 10 minutes 15 minutes uh you don't have to do 20 minutes i like mine really nice and roasted so i use a higher temperature but i just want to remind you that you can make this your own by modifying it and changing it we are gonna show you how to make a raw uh, tomatillo salsa. So tomatillos do not have to be cooked um, to eat. So, you know, do them how you like them, cook them just a little bit soft or roast them until they're really nice and brown and black and, and either way it's great. Um, okay, so while our pan is getting nice and hot, I'm gonna go ahead and come here and show you the, and go through the ingredients that we're using for our uh, raw green salsa. Okay, now, when I first started making raw green salsa, um, I just, it was super random and I thought that that would be really weird. It is delicious. It is so, so good. It's really light. It's really refreshing. 
It's perfect for seafoods on any taco, of course, especially if you have a really rich, like an al pastor taco or something. It complements it so well by the way that it's really light and refreshing on top of a highly seasoned meat. So feel free to use this on either of those items, okay? Now that our pan's nice and hot, I'm gonna go ahead and add in our canola oil. I basically wanna make sure that our pan is nicely coated in, in uh, the oil. Our oil is hot um, and ready. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw in our mix here. Now we have garlic in this. Now you make, make sure that you don't leave your heat on really, really high for too long. You don't want your garlic to burn and get bitter and kind of funky. Um, if you're in a jiff and you're in a hurry and you do not want to have to wait for your salsa to be done in your oven, the stove top is a really, really great way to do it too. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss these up. Make sure they're nicely coated. Turn this down uh, to just medium plus shortly over, and we're going to leave that alone. Um, at home, whenever you, you know, I'm not a huge person that's going to tell you to go purchase things that you don't need. Um, I'm not going to tell you to purchase a name brand or something ridiculous. Sometimes there's, there's, it's important to purchase quality in your kitchen, especially purchasing an item that's going to last you forever is really, really important. Um, for me, uh, a really nice chef knife is one of them. Obviously, have lots of them, but for the everyday home cook, you need to have at least one nice chef knife. Very important. Also, save yourself from having to keep purchasing junky blenders over and over and get yourself a Vitamix. Um, they're fantastic and they last an extensively long time. So, I'm going to go ahead and toss in everything that we're using here today, okay? I'm going to start by putting in my tomatillos, my onion. Garlic, I use a uh, jalapeno. Here, you can use habanero, you can use serrano. Switch it up, do a different onion. It doesn't have to be a white onion. Usually for most classes, I use white onion. However, sometimes I, you know, if I don't have it, I'll use a yellow one. When I make pico, this is pico de gallo. I use red onion a lot just because I love the color that it gives to the pico. As well as the flavor, of course. The taste is by far the most important part, but. Both are delicious, and I like the color that it gets. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the tops off of these green onions. Fun little um, tidbit is that if you just cut to about here, take this and put it in some water in a little cup, um, it will start to grow, and you'll be able to replant outside in your yard. So something really fun to note. I'm, an, I'm not doing that, so I'm just going to cut a little bit off the bottom, cut it into a reasonable amount sizes to help my blender. It's the only purpose. There's one little funky part, so I'm going to throw this out and throw it in. Now, you'll notice that I threw in the whole bundle, stem included, on the cilantro. Um, you know, we learn things our whole life growing up, um, that we, we think certain things are a certain way. Now, when it comes to cilantro, the stem is the most flavorful part of the whole plant. So make sure that you use the whole stem. Don't just pick off the leaves um, and throw those in. The stems are delicious, and these are getting blended, so even better. Okay, I'm going to slice my avocado in half all the way around. Now you can put in a half, you can put in a whole, whatever you like. It's basically just going to change your, change your texture a little bit, right? Of course, a little bit of flavor, but it's definitely going to adjust your texture a lot. Okay, so because acidity can be really high on tomatillos, I'm not going to add any lime into this until after I've already blended it and tasted it, okay? For now, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of salt and pepper. We can always add some more at the end, but we'll do a little bit at a time, okay? Now, when you pick salt, don't use the iodized salt for your food. It is not, um, it doesn't give a good flavor to your food. So pick at least like a kosher salt, a sea salt. Um, I love a Malden uh, flaky sea salt and also uh, Florida salt, both really awesome. If you're concerned about what you're spending on your salt, if you purchase them in bulk in a large amount, they're significantly cheaper and they're wonderful. So, so before you blend up your salsa, make sure to add a little bit of water. Tomatillos are really thick. They're gelatin-like. And if you don't add any water, especially when it sits overnight, uh, when you pull it out, it will literally be like jello. 
So make sure you add a good amount of water in here until you feel comfortable with how much to add. Add a little bit at a time and then you can go ahead and see exactly how you like it. I'm gonna go ahead and blend this and I'll be right back. Now our salsa is blended. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick taste. Now a really good thing that I wanna teach you when you're cooking, and this seems obvious, but you'd be surprised. Lots of people don't taste while you're cooking. So make sure you have the tasting spoons out before you put anything on your table to feed to your friends and family. Make sure to give it a good taste and to make sure that your dish is complete. It is really, really delicious. It definitely needs dip with more salt. And then it's good to go. I'm going to toss this back up and pour it in a bowl. Okay, dope. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour some in here so we can show you how beautiful it is at the end. Um, if you, when you make salsas at home, but purchase some of these. I think you can get them at Smart and Final um, or order them on Amazon, probably even better. Throw them in here, leave them in your fridge. You'll have something really handy to pour your salsas on your food. Okay, I'll put these to the side for now. And let's go ahead and check on our sofa. So we're getting a nice browning over here. When you put things in your, in, on your pan, make sure it's not constantly stirred, okay? Let the smell for a recipe that specifically tells you that you want to constantly stir. Make sure you leave it alone and give it enough time to get some color, okay? So see here, we've got a really nice brown char. Cast iron, that's one of the reasons cast irons are so fantastic. Cast irons give you a really, really nice color. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and leave that alone again. And we'll move on over to our pico here. So I've already pre-chopped a few things here, just to make sure you don't have to watch me chopping forever. Um, here are some of our tomatoes, onion, our chilies, cilantro, and garlic. Now these are our staple items that we use for pico de gallo. Um, you can modify it a little bit if you want, but these are these are the go-to that you want to have, okay? Now, when you're doing your cilantro, I mentioned to keep the stem. The bottom of these are a little bit dried and brown, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut off enough that's the ugly part, okay? So we're going to remove that. I'm going to give this a fold. Now, you can chop it like normal. I'm just doing it this way so that it makes it a little fast, okay? I'm gonna rough chop my cilantro. If you like yours extremely, you know, minced small, go ahead and go back through and do it again. I'm gonna pull mine through, give it another rough chop. Okay, that's good to go for me. Toss this in a little metal bowl. Now, when you make your pico de gallo, if you love cilantro, put a little bit extra. If you don't love cilantro, just put like a little bit. It's okay. Okay. Slide your ingredients over out of the way. Now, I'm not worried, you know, I'm trying to clean and make sure that this is nice and tidy, but I'm not going to wipe it off in between. All of these ingredients are going in the same bowl, so there's no need to go through and wipe it off in between every single item that you cut. You do, however, want to make sure that your area is nice and clean when you're cooking. I make sure that my uh, tomato pieces are not huge. I don't want to have a giant piece of tomato on my chip for pico de gallo. So I try to consider the size of how I'm putting all of my ingredients in order in, in that in that manner. If you don't mind if they're a little bigger, that's okay. Okie dokie, now we're going to move on to our garlic. Now for garlic, you don't want, you. I only like to mince my garlic, garlic if I'm going to be eating it raw. 
if I'm cooking it, I just like it rough top. I definitely don't want to do it mint because I don't want it to burn. So here, uh, you'll notice I'm going to do it a little bit smaller than I would if um, I was cooking my garlic. Now, when you're chopping, make sure you don't scrape your blade. It's terrible for the blade and damages it. So turn it over to bring your ingredients back together. Now this will be significantly handy. If you have a knife or knife, uh, chopping and prepping your ingredients is gonna be a lot more difficult. Um, the first couple of times, sometimes I've had somebody, which I don't usually let people borrow my, my knives, but there's a few times where people have used them and they're like, wow, that makes my job so much easier because I'm using a knife. It's worth it. I'm gonna chop all my garlic in. Okay, so here for your chili, if you don't like spicy, you can cut it up and down the middle. Another way to check your heat. So one thing I want to tell you is that the same chili, the same type of chili. So if I have five different serranos, um, they can have a different heat, heat level. Okay, so make sure that you want to check your serrano. In case you want to check your serrano to see how much heat you're going to get, cut it open and then carefully kind of give it a smell. You can smell a lot of times when things are extremely hot. So don't get crazy and, you know, whiff it too much, but give it a little smell, then you'll know how hot it is. Another way, if that's not enough for you, is just to cut a little tip off the end, rub it on your fingers, um, taste, and, and taste, you know, your finger, or use this little end piece to give it a chew, and then you'll know. I'm gonna use all my seeds. Good to go, throw all this in. Last but not least, for chopping is our onion. I'm going to use a white onion, but you could use whichever you like. I'm going to cut both of my ends off, slice it down the middle. Now there's lots of different ways to cut your onion. Um, this is just my personal favorite, okay? So don't let somebody tell you, oh, you can't do something that way. You can cut your onion however you feel most comfortable. Now there is some really important things to learn about, you know, culinary art learn how to do things a few different ways and see what works best for you okay i'm going to do thin splits here holding everything together i'm going to go ahead and cut some more small pieces I'm gonna use only half of this onion. I don't want the whole thing because that much onion for me is too overwhelming. I might have a quick left chop back through. Now, when I am cooking onions or, or cutting, chopping onions, excuse me, I do like to use a longer blade. So you'll notice between the two here, um, there's little divots in the side. This is perfect for when you're cutting vegetables so they don't stick. But when I am going to cut a lot more ingredients, the longer blade is really helpful in order to get all of your ingredients. Okay, bring everything back together. Oh yeah, my husband and he just said. Tell them how you judge a taco place. I definitely judge a taco place by how they cut the onion. Um, it's just me personally, I hate when I get a huge bite of raw onion, um, especially white onion inside my food. Um, I feel like it, it just needs to be chopped to that get small. Don't, don't cut corners, mince it nice and small. Okay, here we're good to go. Okay, now we're gonna toss in our, the rest of our chilies that I already did. Remove this onion, we don't need it. Okay, so lime, just in case your lime seems a little bit dry, give it a good roll, push it down and put some pressure on it. Also a little trick is to uh, put it in the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds. Um, it will release a lot of the juices and be helpful to you. Now, if you have a cut on your hand, here is right where we all know that you have one. It's a miraculous, even if it's a little tiny paper cut or something. Here, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it, get all the juices out. Don't waste any. 
And then as, as soon as I'm done squeezing this lime, I'm going to give it a toss, and then we're going to go check our uh, teeth on the teeth. Now at this point, you can remove it from your heat and go ahead and give it a blend. I like to soften mine a bit more, so I'm going to leave that a little longer while we finish. So you know, we just launched online uh, virtual cooking classes. So every Wednesday at 5 p.m. and every Saturday at 4 p.m. on Zoom, uh, you'll be learning how to cook virtually. So it's all interactive. You're going to talk to a cool time. I'm going to teach you how to cook. I'm not going to teach you how to follow a recipe. So my goal is for you, um, those of you who don't really feel comfortable and know how to cook very well, come on, bring your friends, bring your family, have something fun to do at night and look forward to. Um, I'm gonna teach you how to cook. The goal being in the future, you can repeat and make dishes on your own without needing to follow a piece of paper first, okay? Wednesday night is the basics of cooking. So every Wednesday you're gonna learn, um, they're gonna go in order four weeks in a row the basics of cooking. And then on Saturday night, it will be a particular dish. So something fun to do, date night, whatever. We'll have a list of um what all of the is gonna be cooked for each class um up online for about a month out. So you'll be able to go online, pick which ones you want to do, sign up. They're only ten dollars a class, you can't do that. Um and I'll see you there. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my pico de gallo into this bowl. Look how delicious that looks. There you go. Okay, look how beautiful that is. Keep it guys with the gum. Let's put this with the other salsa. Reclean my area off. One really good other thing to know is that, you know, tonight while you're watching this or today, whatever time of day it is, you know, we're here in my home cooking. So I just want to remind you for those of you who are like, well, I don't have all the right equipment. I don't have everything perfect. I don't have the best knife. I don't have the best um, tools. That's okay, just come. Um, there's really actually very little that you need uh, to have in order to cook, okay? There's about five or six really, really essential things. I go through that in my class and you know exactly what to get. I will help guide you and answer all of your questions so you're gonna feel really, really comfortable at home um, cooking, okay? Let's go ahead and check over here. These are pretty good. We're almost there, but I'm gonna go ahead and just let it keep cooking until we're basically ready, okay? Over here, I'm gonna turn on my skillet and get it nice and hot to cook our chili, okay? I just wanna warn you real quick, before you cook dried chili, you don't wanna um, pepper spray your house, but I'm gonna warn you now. Um, make sure that you are ready to stay at your stove top the whole time you're cooking them. There's two different ways that I recommend. One, you can put them in some water, uh, just to boil and soften them for about two minutes. They're going to be really vibrant red in color. The other that is the most traditional and my preference is to use um, a kamal. I'm just using actually a crepe pan, so either one will do just fine. I'm going to throw this on medium to high heat, and then we're going to go ahead and get um, just just a nice char on here, okay? The reason you can't leave your stove top is because once these bad boys get enough heat, they start to smoke and they let off a very, very pungent um, odor, which is going to make you cough and have to open all the windows in the house, even maybe have to go outside of them at once or twice. So don't do that, make sure you stay with them, okay? Again, we're using guajillo chilies, puya chilies, we're using negro chilies, hatch chilies, and arbol chilies. Do you have to use all five? No, but I'm using all five because I want to teach you, that you, you know, what all five chilies were. And to make yourself comfortable using something, you know, more than just one or two that you're using. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and throw these dried chilies on my pan over here to get them nice and toasty. They're going to be on here for probably three, about three minutes. Now, I don't want you to think that when you're cooking your food, that just because I say three minutes, that means you should leave yours on for three minutes exactly. When we cook food, I'm not going to teach you an exact time. I'm going to teach you what to look for to know that it's done, how to taste it, how to see it, how to smell it. Use your senses when you're cooking in order for you not to have to just set a timer and you can feel comfortable, okay? Now the problem with timers, right, or recipes often, is that they can set us up for failure, okay? Um, every heat source is gonna be different, the stove cap you have, you know, each one lets off a different amount of heat, 
your ovens have hot spots in them. So it's really important for you to learn what things should look like, what things should taste like, um, and what you can kind of change or modify in order to make it okay for how your dish comes out. I'm gonna leave these alone here for a few minutes. This guy is done. So I'm gonna turn my heat off. And let's check on our chili from the oven. Okay, so look how beautiful this is. These were in the oven uh, for exactly 20 minutes at 400 degrees. They're perfect. I love how charred they are. Everything in here is really soft. You can see these tomatillos have already kind of smacked down. I'm gonna set this to the side for a moment, just let it cool, and we're going to make our um, roasted green salsa. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this all in my blender here, and I will see you in a sec. Okay, so I threw everything from my green, my, my skillet that was making the green salsa right in here to my blender. It looks beautiful, just how I like it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my garlic and my herbs. Now, for your green salsa, uh, you do not have to use the whole bundle. I actually don't really like using a whole bundle of cilantro in my salsa verde. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw these to the side and just do about half. Again, preference, okay? It's really important for you to know you can modify it to make it your own. In general, when I make my salsas, I use one pound of tomatillos, one onion, four cloves of garlic, a half bundle of cilantro, and then whatever chilies you wanna to use to modify and make it your own. I put, I put three chilies in here, I believe, but I will put them in myself with anywhere from two to 10, okay? So do whatever you like a little bit or do a lot. Okay, so our chilies look really good. Take a peek. They got a nice dark color on them. They're smoking, so I'm gonna set them to the side in the other room, just so it doesn't make it too smoky in here, and we'll blend them right up. Okay, now that we have all of our ingredients for our green roasted salsa in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some water again and give it a blend. Okay, so my salsa looks delicious. Haven't tasted it yet. Remember, don't forget, you gotta give it a taste. Now, tomatillos can really be tart, right? It's just part of their characteristic. If you get tomatillos, they're too tart, right? And to you, they just seem like they're a little bit too sour. Maybe they're not in season. Um, in California, we're really lucky. Pretty much get tomatillos year round. But in, in case it's um, just not quite to your liking, totally not traditional, but this is my trick and I promise it works. It's actually how I snagged my husband. He um, promises that the way that he bought me was with my salsa, or the way that I got, the way that I got him was with my salsa. <laughs> he fell in love with it. So I'm gonna put in just a little bit of brown sugar here because mine is just a smidge too tart. Sugar. Okay, let's go ahead and taste it again. Um, my husband just wanted to mention a real, another really good question. Can you use white sugar? Absolutely. Now, I use brown, but basically you want to use a sweetener of some kind. So use agave, use honey, use a little bit of brown sugar, a splash of white sugar. There's a lot of variables of things you can use just to, just to um, cut that tartness a little bit. Delicious. Now, right now, it's pretty hot on my palate, um, but tomorrow it's gonna probably be about half as hot. So if it seems spicy when you first make it, perfect. It won't be tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna leave this over here so you guys can take a peek. All of them together.
Okay, let's go ahead and throw in all the stuff for our red. Again, half of the bundle. I don't want the whole thing. Now, lots of people wonder, like, can I throw in um, raw chilies? Absolutely. Uh, raw and cooked, both are really, really delicious. Feel free to use that too. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get all this stuff here in our blender. <clears throat> okay, here's our dried chilies. They're nice and roasted. I'm going to toss all these in. You can hear they're real crispy. It's perfect. You'll notice I didn't put any oil. I just toasted them up. Now, if you don't want that dark color and you want a really vibrant red, use a guajillo chili. Probably my favorite for the vibrant color, if that's what you're looking for. Now, all the ingredients for my roasted red salsa are in. I went ahead and added in raw garlic, cilantro, and my chili. Again, water. And before I blend this up, I want to go over real quick a few variables of things that you could add. Um, I really like to use coriander seed or cumin seed. If you don't have them, feel free to use um, ground coriander or ground cumin. Okay, they're both really, really delicious in here. I won't put them in for today, but know that you can add in um, some other, other items to, to switch it up. Okay, so I went ahead and blended it up. I can tell just visually that it was still very, very thick. Okay? Again, tomatillos um, are really, really thick in texture when you blend them. So make sure to add a little bit extra water if you need to, okay? Even if it looks like it's not thick tonight, tomorrow uh, when you pull it out of uh, the fridge in a container, it will probably be, if you don't add enough water, don't worry. Um, it'll, you know, if it's gelatin-like, pull it out throw it in the blender with just a little bit more water, and then put it back away. It's totally fine. So well, now we're gonna give it a taste. It needs a little bit of salt, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. This one, I think because of the chilies, doesn't let out just as much of the tartness. Um, we do love the brown sugar in it, but for this one, I'm just gonna leave it out and leave it traditional roasted. Now, traditionally, we do not put salsas in blenders either. We put them in mojajete, uh, which are basically um, these large stone uh, bowls, right? These large stone bowls. And inside, what we would do here is we would toss in everything from, you know, what was in my kumal or my skillet that I had already cooked and take this guy and roast, uh, excuse me, and uh, mash and blend everything up. In here, you tend to get a much more chunky salsa, which is totally delicious. Um, and if you have the time and you want to do it this way, do it. It's really, really awesome. I just wanted to pull that out so you guys could take a peek and see it. I'm going to blend this up one last time. I added the salt, um, and then we're going to go. Okay, now let's take a peek and see what we got. Delicious. Okay, be careful of this stuff stains. Let's try it side. I'll clean it in just a moment. Now let's come over here and take a peek at everything that we made today. How beautiful is this all together, right? Okay, so here's all the yummy salsas that we made today. They are our salsa babies. We have a roasted red salsa, roasted green, raw green and pico de gallo. Now don't forget to modify and switch these up how you like, okay? You can switch out the raw chilies. The essential things you have to have for your salsa is a tomato or tomatillo. Onion, red, green, yellow, switch it up. Peppers, any type of chili pepper that you wanna use, I use raw and sometimes I use dried if I'm gonna use a red one. Garlic is essential and then the rest, okay? You can modify to change it and creatively make it your own. You can use um, different types of seeds, cumin seeds, coriander seed. Uh, you can use ground of the same two, cumin. Um, make sure to add a little bit of salt and pepper. You can switch out your herbs, green onion, uh, parsley, cilantro, et cetera, okay? Get creative, do something fun. Make sure that if, when, when, not if, when you make these salsas, please uh, take a quick pic, send it to me. 
tag me in it at Chef Stephanie Chinchilla for Instagram. If you want to learn more about me and what we do, come on to www.chefchinchilla.com. Uh, starting May 1st, we have our podcast launching, which is going to be really fun and exciting. We're going to talk about um, interviews with different chefs locally, tell you where to go shop and buy um, your produce and your meats, talk about farming and how important it is to, to know what kind of breeds that you're eating and what kind of practices they're doing for farming. We're going to talk about some cooking myths, which are cool too. We'll probably break a few things that you've been taught all growing up and tell you um, how to modify and change those so that you can make your food better to cook for you, your family, and friends at home. Okay, for now, come along and uh, do our cooking classes that are virtual. Again, they're going to be Wednesdays at 5 p.m., Saturdays at 4 p.m. Wednesdays is a basics of cooking. So if you feel like you're, if you feel like you're not the person at home who really feels comfortable in your kitchen, you're in such good hands. Come on and join us. I'm going to teach you all the basics of the things that you need to know. Um, and then on Saturdays, we're going to pick a fun recipe. It's going to be different. Short ribs, how to make homemade tortillas, how to make a meat sauce, how to make pasta, all kinds of good stuff. Next Saturday on April 18th, I'm teaching how to make homemade tortillas and al pastor tacos. That is wonderfully delicious. So you're not going to want to miss that. And Wednesday on 4-15, April 15th, we're going to teach how to cook meats. So this week we're going to do how to break down a whole chicken, how to cook fish, how to make a roast, and how to make perfect steak. That was the last one that we're doing on Wednesday. So I hope to see you guys there. Um, and it was so nice to meet you. Thank you, all things Orange County, for having me. Bye-bye.